Greetings and salutations, everyone. My name is Andrew Kirkhoff, and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today, I'm going to be talking about my 2024 NFL playoff predictions. And as you guys can see to the right side of the screen, we have the bracket that I filled out earlier this morning. I traveled on over to myplayoffpicks.com, which you guys can do. It's a free service. And I went ahead and filled out my bracket. And at the end, I have the Baltimore Ravens defeating the San Francisco 49ers. But before we get there, of course, a little bit of context as to how I went ahead and came to this conclusion. Sure, the top two teams of the AFC and NFC find themselves in the championship, in my humble opinion, with no biases attached. But there is a process there, right? On the AFC side, I have the Buffalo Bills taking on the Pittsburgh Steelers, of course, defeating the Steelers without TJ Watt, their record as a team. Not a pretty one. We have the Kansas City Chiefs taking on the Miami Dolphins. Miami traveling to Kansas City in the cold weather game. Two, it doesn't fare well in those circumstances. The Chiefs win there. When we talk about the Houston Texans, of course, with a playoff berth with a rookie quarterback and a rookie head coach taking on the Cleveland Browns, Joe Flacco, and what they've been able to cook up over the course of the last month here, I think the Cleveland Browns have a significant advantage. No team in the league wants to play up against their defense. And I think the Houston Texans obviously had a huge number put up on them just a couple weeks ago by the Cleveland Browns in Houston. This should be another matchup in which the Browns should be able to find themselves successful. So then we move on to the second round of the AFC. The Baltimore Ravens versus the Cleveland Browns. A lot of people have been talking about the Browns are the only team that could potentially dethrone the Baltimore Ravens on their way to the Super Bowl. But I think Lamar Jackson taking on Joe Flacco, that, that again, the storyline itself builds itself very similar to, you know, Matthew Stafford returning to Detroit going into Sunday Night Football's game. But I do believe that the Baltimore Ravens stay strong, are able to defeat their division rival. Then we have the Bills taking on the Chiefs. Even though the Bills were able to defeat the Chiefs earlier this season, I think the Chiefs in the playoffs will gain their momentum, will gain more confidence. And when Travis Kelsey takes those steps forward and actually you know, starts doing something in comparison to what he's been able to produce as of late, I think the Chiefs will advance to the AFC Championship. The Baltimore Ravens will defeat them and get to the Super Bowl. Now, on the other end of the bracket, of course, we have the Cowboys versus the Packers. The Packers' defense is non-existent in many circumstances. I think the Cowboys just buzzsaw through that team especially considering they have the home field advantage we have the lions taking on the rams the rams as of late since their bye week have been one of the hottest teams in the national football league with matthew stafford returning to detroit this should be an exciting matchup but i do expect the rams who are truly unstoppable on offense to be able to bust out through that defense and that secondary that has struggled all season long then we have the tampa bay buccaneers taking on the philadelphia eagles even though the tampa bay buccaneers for a second consecutive season are able to win the nfc south it doesn't really mean much. I think taking on the Philadelphia Eagles, even though the Eagles have dealt with a lot of injuries as of late and haven't been winning games, I think they'll be able to muster up a victory, even a close one, against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Advancing to the second round, the Cowboys should be able to handle the Eagles as they have already thus far this season. The Rams, unfortunately, uh, will lose to the San Francisco 49ers, even though the Rams are my team. And as we get to the NFC Championship game, I would hope this is going to be an exciting game, but the 49ers are so well put together. This team really is just strong. They've dealt with very few injuries over the course of this season to key players. And now that they're fully healthy, they should be able to advance to the Super Bowl, unlike they were able to last year because of said injuries that really did impact them. I expect the Baltimore Ravens to beat the 49ers like they did earlier this year. Probably not in the same fashion, but nonetheless, those are my predictions. Now, if we advance to perhaps my biased bracket, you guys can see the following. If I was to use my full bias and my full hopes as to what I expect and I would hope to see in the NFL playoffs in the coming weeks, it would be that the Los Angeles Rams would be able to you know, roll through every team that they face. Now that requires that they're able to beat the Lions, the 49ers, and the Dallas Cowboys. These three best teams in the NFC based on record. Now if they're able to accomplish that, fantastic. We'd love to see it, especially considering I would love to see a rematch between my Rams and the Baltimore Ravens. Earlier this season, a very competitive game. In my opinion, the best game I saw all season long. It ended in overtime with a punt return by the Baltimore Ravens. An exciting matchup, and these teams match up very well, in my opinion. I would hope that this could potentially happen, but I doubt it, mainly because that San Francisco 49ers team is very difficult to beat, especially when they're on their home field. Now, many of you may still have the itch for fantasy football, and I wanted to go ahead and let you guys know there's still ways to play fantasy football throughout the NFL playoffs. For those of you guys who haven't checked out Underdog Fantasy at this current moment in time, you can go ahead, head on over to their website, link down in the description, and draft teams for the NFL playoffs in regards to their best ball drafts. Again, I'll go ahead and conduct the draft over the course of today's episode, potentially put together a couple pick'em slips because 
there are other ways to play fantasy even when our leagues and our seasons are done so be sure to travel on over for those of you guys who travel on over via the link down in the description using code andrew when you sign up and make a first time deposit minimum of ten dollars you'll be eligible for a first time deposit match up to 100 so if you deposit 10 you'll get 10 if you deposit 100 you'll get 100 again like i mentioned earlier in regards to potential pick em plays i like travis kelsey going into this week but i'll go into more details regarding that in just a moment for those of you wondering if you're eligible to potentially draft via underdog fantasy for the upcoming nfl playoffs check out the map to the right side of the screen to determine your eligibility and if you sign up before the sunday night football game between the la rams and of course the detroit lions you can take advantage of the new customer special of matthew stafford 0.5 total yards so let's go ahead and let's show you a couple of the drafts that i conducted over the course of the last couple of days prior to the nfl playoffs beginning as you guys can see i was the number four overall draft pick here and in these nfl best ball drafts via underdog fantasy it's a six team overall draft and you're each drafting 10 total players. So this team I went ahead and constructed is in regards to the specific strategy of being able to get majority of the players on two different teams in hopes that they can advance multiple rounds, if not go to the Super Bowl. So I went ahead and constructed a team that contains Buffalo Bills and Los Angeles Rams. Again, I'm hoping that my Los Angeles Rams can get into not only you know the second round, but hopefully into the NFC Championship, maybe get themselves into the conversation of potentially winning a Super Bowl once again. But as this you know draft was conducted i thought okay based on adps i need to build it in terms of getting players on the afc side of the bracket in which i can get multiple players on a singular team and i could have done this with the chiefs i could have done this with the bills i decided to do it with the bills in this circumstance putting together josh allen stefan diggs as my first two picks i wanted james cook as my third round pick but unfortunately was taken a little bit early but i went ahead and i filled in with someone like travis kelsey if in case he's able to have himself those upside performances like I expect him to in the coming weeks, of course, he should be able to contribute to this team. And then I began to build the LA Rams side of this overall team, putting together guys like Kyron Williams, Puka Nakua, Cooper Cup, then Dalton Kincaid back on the Bill side into Matthew Stafford, Rashad White as a little sprinkle because I didn't have the ability to draft. James Cook just wanted some other running back help within this overall team and Kareem Hunt. If in fact we end up seeing you know, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers advance, we get two weeks out of Rashad White. If we're able to see Kareem Hunt advance, of course, we're able to get potentially two, maybe even three weeks out of his overall contributions. But this is the teams that I like to kind of build. I want to build it around two teams. And with the third overall pick within this specific draft, did exactly that. They built a team that literally consisted of Lions and Ravens. And there was only one other player from a different team, which was DeAndre Swift. Otherwise, they have Lamar. Jared Goff, Jameer Gibbs, David Montgomery. Unfortunately, they were not able to get any of the running backs of the Baltimore Ravens, but still were able to get a lot of the receiving threats. Zay Flowers, Amon Ross, Sam Laporta, Jamison Williams, and of course, Mark Andrews in the hopes that potentially he could end up returning from his injury. These are the kind of teams that I truly think can make a kind of run in the overall NFL best ball leagues in regards to the 2024 NFL playoff draft. It's a matter of being able to predict correctly as to which teams are going to advance, have multiple rounds of success. And if, in fact, you're able to predict correctly, your team should be able to, you know, go ahead, rack up a bunch of points and lead you to the promised land. So I think these are two great overall draft examples as to how you can build your team. Go ahead, head on over, sign up today using code Andrew, and of course, draft some teams. Now that we've gone ahead and covered this, I want to go ahead and talk about a couple pick and plays going into this weekend. Now, like I mentioned earlier, I really do like the potential of Travis Kelsey especially in regards to the pick em slips now when we go ahead and travel on over to his name of course we find that he has a number of 56 and a half receiving yards and even though as of late he hasn't been able to surpass this number there is a huge difference between regular season travis kelsey and playoff travis kelsey just to go ahead and give you some indication as to the huge difference over the course of the last nine games that Travis Kelsey has played in the postseason, he's averaging 11 targets, 9 receptions, 102 receiving yards, 1.1 receiving touchdowns, and 21.8 fantasy points per game over the last nine postseason games. To extend it even further, in the last 14 playoff games that he has played with Patrick Mahomes as his starting quarterback, he's averaging 9.7 targets, 7.9 receptions, 90 receiving yards, 1 touchdown per game, and 19.62 fantasy points per game the success has been there for Travis Kelsey 
over the years in the postseason. And like I mentioned, in the last nine consecutive games, he has been on fire. While his average has been over 102 receiving yards, he's been able to surpass 78 receiving yards in all nine of those consecutive games. So currently his number being at, what, 56 and a half, even though it has gone up, what, one yard over the course of the last couple hours, I truly do believe this is the number that I'm taking higher, especially against the Miami Dolphins, who will be struggling in the weather, whose defense as of late, again, has been losing a lot of key players due to injury, unfortunately. I expect the Kansas City Chiefs to win, and I expect Travis Kelsey to help them accomplish that. Now, another player that I like going into this weekend is in regards to David Njoku. Let's go ahead and let's keep the kind of topic on tight ends. Of course, going into this weekend's game against the Houston Texans, we have the potential of David Njoku first and foremost taking advantage of an advantageous matchup. The Houston Texans have struggled all season long. For those of you who have stayed up to date on my overall rankings over the course of weeks 1 through 18, we have all talked about the idea that the Houston Texans versus Titans, they haven't fared well. And even though last time out where David Njoku took on the Houston Texans just a couple weeks back, he wasn't able to surpass this number of 55 and a half receiving yards. Just to put it into perspective, three of the last four games that David Njoku has played with Joe Flacco, he has surpassed 91 receiving yards in three of the four games and has scored at least one receiving touchdown in three of those four games. Last time out against this defense, against the Houston Texans in Houston, Amari Cooper went for 265 receiving yards, two receiving touchdowns. I would assume that the Houston Texans defense are going to be purely trying to double cover him and are hoping to stop Amari Cooper in all potential facets. And when they do so, David Njoku should be able to find himself a lot of success, especially considering how much opportunity he is given on a weekly basis with Joe Flacco as his starting quarterback. Now, there are a lot of other potential plays that you can make. There are other plays that I specifically like. I'll potentially go ahead, swing on by Sunday morning. I'll do a live stream in regards to which plays I want to go with going into this specific weekend, wild card weekend. Uh, but there are a lot of plays here. And as the week progresses, some of these numbers are going to change. There will be an extension to these overall stats that you could potentially make plays on. I wanted to go ahead and go with Josh Allen, even though last week he was my favorite play and he was not able to score a rushing touchdown, even though he's been able to do it so consistently as of late. They don't even have a rushing touchdown uh, you know, company with this overall play. As the week progresses, I expect it to show up. Again, Josh Allen, even though last week he didn't score a rushing touchdown, prior to that, he had scored a rushing touchdown in 12 of the 14 games he has played consecutively. So now it's 12 of the last 15 games he has played in the regular season with a rushing touchdown. And even though, you know, it was one of my favorite plays last week and it didn't hit, we're going to go ahead and we're going back to the well, hoping that he can find himself in the end zone as the main goal line back per se of this overall team. Either way, I want to thank you guys for watching. Let me know down in the comment section who you believe is going to win the Super Bowl this year. What potential draft strategies are you conducting for your upcoming NFL playoff best ball drafts? And which potential, you know, potential pick them plays should I be looking for? Thank you everybody for watching. I appreciate the support. Thank you for a wonderful 2023 fantasy football season. And until next time, I'll see you guys. Peace. <laughs>